What's up, board game people? It's a new month, and while it might be a bit slower on crowdfunding, the news is just preheating along with the rest of us and getting ready to explode with Gen Con now being less than one month away. We have a lot to cover, so let's get to it. First off, thank you to all of my amazing Patreons, and welcome to all those who've joined us in the last week. I also wanted to offer a big thank you to Stiegel Sauer, who made the huge jump from a light poke all the way to a flesh wound. Thank you so much for your support. Now, live on crowdfunding, we have Escape from Project Reese, the second chapter in the Escape from Zombies series. This Kickstarter campaign has only a few hours remaining, so go check it out. Eldfall Chronicles Northern Wind is entering their last week on Kickstarter, and they've been killing it with the daily reveals, reasonably priced stretch goals, and some awesome add-ons. This campaign just gets better and better. Phantom Epoch also has around a week remaining on Kickstarter, and things are really heating up. They've added some amazing game trays to the Deluxe Pledge through the stretch goals lately, and there's still so much more to come. They've been super active in the comments, and I can't wait to see how this last week plays out for them. Tanar's Adventures The Ultimate Edition has sailed past the $1 million mark and it just keeps going. This is an excellent opportunity to grab a reprint of Adventures and Arena the Contest in its most complete form yet. With new storage, updated books, and a better tutorial, and a whole new way to play Arena the Contest, there's a lot to love here. Over on GameFound, we have the last week of Scarface 1920 Bloody Business. This campaign has exploded for them and I'm happy to see so many new eyes on what looks like an amazing game. Finally, over on Backerkit, the hype train has run out of gas, but not before carrying yet another Gloomhaven campaign across the funding line. If you're okay with getting your 500 or so Gloomhaven minis in 2025 or later, after you get your Gloomhaven 2nd edition mid-2024, or likely have to wait for fulfillment to actually end in 2025, and then starting to slog through 400 plus hours of completely sterilized content, then they might have the deal for you. Perhaps I'm just Gloomhavened out. I don't know, I just didn't feel the FOMO this time around, and that's okay. Fresh on crowdfunding this week, we have the Planet Unknown Supermoon Expansion and Deluxe Edition reprint campaign, launching on GameFound. Now on to the news. Let's get a couple of crazy announcements out of the way first, starting with my top pick from the bunch. Shadowborn Games, creators of Oathsworn Into the Deepwood, are teasing their next game. And no, it's not an Oathsworn expansion. They're billing it as an Arthurian area control game like no other. Details are almost non-existent, but Shadowborn certainly has my attention. And I hope they're ready to spill the beans at Gen Con or even before. This one is slated for 2024. In other announcements, Simon has also dropped an Arthurian area control game on us. Whether this was planned or not, I don't know, but my money is on Shadowborn. Mordred, their area control game, has you vying for favor of the three legendary leaders remaining after Arthur has disappeared when Britain and the Fey Realm merged. You'll be trying to impress Mordred, Morgana, and Merlin to come out on top. The best thing that I can see going for this one is artwork by Adrian Smith. Date-wise, they only tell us soon. And another Simon announcement? Well, have you ever just stopped in the middle of a Zombicide scenario and thought to yourself, Self, you know what would be perfect for this moment right here? If all of Monty Python's fine circus were to suddenly appear and Timothy were to ask his questions three. Yeah, I doubt that thought ever crossed your mind, but just that scenario could be coming to a Zombicide game near you when they release the huge Monty Python character pack for the game. I mean, who doesn't need more Monty Python in their life, right? Surprisingly, there's still news for the Lobotomy campaign. Lobotomy 1 add-ons are on their way to the studio and shipping statuses will get updated over the next week. Latebacking is still available for a bit longer, but don't wait too long or they'll lock the doors forever. The latest update from Storm Sunder leaves quite a lot to be desired. This is Testing Edition 2, and the gist of this news update states what we already know. Testing is hard, and it takes time. Balance is still a top priority. They deep dive into the Guard Captain's Sever fight, trying to leave out as many spoilers as possible. They've toned back her damage a bit and slightly changed up her strategist ability. Her cronies have also been nerfed a bit. It seems that now that the miniatures are ready to go, actual news for the game will be riding the slow train for a bit. Fulfillment of Solar 175 is complete. By all accounts I've heard, the game is excellent and it's on my shortlist to get tabled once I get enough of a break to actually put some time into it. Luddite, their next game set in the same universe, is set to launch on Kickstarter on July 11th. They'll be offering returning backers free shipping should they wish to back the new Roll and Write. I have exactly zero Roll and Write games in my collection, and this will possibly be the first. I can't wait to see more about the game very soon. Miniature molds for Skyrise are almost complete. 
The insert design is also coming along quite nicely, and they can't wait to share it with us all soon. The June production update for Dark Venture is showing off old and new faces. All the mini expansion and crawl character cards are complete. Kelvin the Butcher can inflict damage before ever entering combat. Lavrock the Skullbreaker is a new hero you might be familiar with, and Trilock will increase its power each battle turn. There'll be more characters in Crawl than you expected, but fewer items. They've also added a new mode to the game for solo or co-op. This will be the full world exploration mode where you can string together exploration of every location you own. This should be a bit of a campaign for the game, and a save game system is being included to allow you to stretch the game out as long as necessary. We got a long overdue update for Divinus this week. They're expecting a physical digital print copy of the Shadows of Yggdrasil expansion soon. They were happy with the samples of the core box and have received the white samples for the Chest of Plenty. The amount of back and forth with the factory to get everything corrected is likely going to push the October delivery estimate back by a bit. I would say this is probably a little more than likely. I'd bet on it at this point. They left us with a quick peek at the getting started slip in the core box and a peek at a few of the character cards. Updates for Aeon Trespass Odyssey's second wave and the second printing campaign will be combined until such time as Wave 2 ships. The second printing campaign unlocked a ton of content for the yet unfinished cycles 4 and 5, and all of that is making its way into Wave 2 boxes whether you back the second printing or not. The Babelian Lunacy model has been updated yet again. This time it's getting bigger and becoming modular. This guy is going to be something to see growing as the story progresses. There's so much more added over the course of the second printing campaign, and they've been nice enough to condense everything into a single list where you can read the full updates and get an idea of each edition. Make sure and check the update if you're curious. The pledge manager for the second printing will become available towards the end of July or early August. The pledge manager will only be open for a few months so they can pursue a more aggressive timeline to get everyone their games. There is no ATO campaign planned for 2024 or 2025, meaning that if you want the illuminated cycles, you need to get them while the pledge manager is open this time around. They've left us with some artwork spanning ATO projects both past and possibly future. The timeline for Iridia The Past We Dare Tread has remained unchanged this month. The pledge manager is closing on August the 1st, and estimated delivery is quarter one of 2024. Congrats to Luke and Alex who have been promoted to associate developers for their tireless work on testing the game and organizing the external tests. The external tests went really well, and quite a few edits have been made based off the feedback. One of the biggest is the addition of FAQs to the back of every foe card so the information you might need will be in arm's reach. They've updated foe names and attacks to be more fun and thematic, changed monsters to foes across the game, changed the Lunari elf to Lunari, updated the player mat so character skills are permanent and RP points are much clearer. They've added shared skills for three to four players, did a beautifying pass on the foe cards, fixed a ton of typos, and many other redacted changes. They're beginning to submit files to Panda for pre-verification that everything is formatted correctly. This should make things go smoother once the final files are ready. They're once again looking for testers if you're interested, and they'll be adding shipping to the Pledge Manager in mid-July. The Pledge Manager for Dungeon Crusade has closed, and mass production is ramping up. If you didn't manage to make a pledge in time, there's still a few reserve copies left, but act fast. Shipping is planned to start around the end of summer and proceed into early fall. Roger is working with Paul Cabral to add yet another game mode to the game. This one is called Dungeon Crusade Chronicles. This pairs down the experience down to its basics, offering a quick setup and a single dungeon tile and much faster playtimes. This will be available for everyone to download and play in the hopefully near future. In Tenaris RPG news, the player guide will be updated soon on DriveThruRPG. There will likely be one more update before the book heads to print, so if you notice something wrong, make sure and let them know. The Chronicles of Drunagor Apocalypse and Reprint campaign dropped a huge update on us, packed with details. First, a note on production. Reprints of all languages are in the final stages of mass production, and should be getting ready to be loaded onto ships very soon. They'll provide more specific dates as soon as they have them. On the Apocalypse side, the mold making for the miniatures is complete, and production of the miniatures is underway and set to end in August. Paper material production is complete, and they've already begun assembling what they can of the game. The Apocalypse dice have been causing them significant issues, as getting that eye perfectly centered on the 20 spot hasn't proven to be an easy process. This seems to be another stumble from Spider-Mine Games, who's slowly developing a track record for delayed productions. CGS is working with Spider-Mine to resolve the issues, and CGS still intends to deliver the product at the quality they promised to backers.
The update then deep dives into the world building and conception of Dronagore and Apocalypse. If you have the time, it's absolutely worth the read. Finally, QR codes for the 1.5 doors have been released to the public. They had to take some extra time to get the darkness doors to meet player expectations, but the hard work has paid off and they're now available. These are a digital asset that can and will receive updates from time to time, so if you have feedback for them, be sure and let them know. The companion app has also seen a significant update. The monster randomizer has been fully upgraded to the companion app and is complete with a searchable index, a campaign tracker, status, aura, and outcome trackers, and much more. Last, they're about to send out a survey to help them learn more about their community. Completing the survey will enter you to win a pledge from their upcoming campaign, Dante Invasion of Hell, or whatever the final title ends up being. A quick, unofficial update from Unconscious Mind lets us know that Johnny has handed over the solo components and rules, and that a tabletop simulator room has been built for testing. All files for the updated components have been sent to Panda, and they're awaiting pictures of the deluxe scoring markers, the metal reputation marker, the screen printed idea tokens, and more. Vincent has been preparing the stickers for the ink pots, and Dreamworld files have all been sent to Panda. Development continues non-stop and the game is coming along nicely. Port dates are in for Burn Cycle's reprint and expansion. The US ship will hit port on July 23rd. For the UK, it will be August 1st. In Canada, the ship will arrive on the 24th of July. Australia should see theirs on July 12th, and VFI has stock in hand and will start shipping as soon as too many bones last shipments have gone out. The files are finally at the printers for Legendary Kingdom's Pirates of the Splintered Isles. They're waiting initial copies for review before beginning production. Hopefully there won't be a paper shortage or a months long delay before we hear of the actual start of production. There's a lot more blue on the SAS Rogue Regiment progress chart. This must mean good things. They're now providing a very generous fulfillment estimate of August 2023. Looking over the remaining items on the chart, this is a very tight, if not impossible, schedule to keep. I'll be interested to see how speedy production is for the project. There was a slight mistake in the last Nanolith update, but they're owning up to it in this month's update, and thankfully it was minor, and everything is chugging along nicely. Layout for the side missions, chapter, sector alpha, still needed to be complete for the scenario and campaign book. This has now been done and corrections have been incorporated. English translations for Chapter 4, 5, and Sector Alpha have been finished and another round of proofing is happening. They badly wanted to present the laid out rulebook, but they've decided to have it completed in English first to allow Catherine an easier experience of laying out such a pivotal component in her native language. Translations are being handled with reverence and full glossaries are being developed to ensure terms and naming are as accurate as possible across the project. Amis continues to work through the card types, and Longpack has confirmed the layout for the cards is printable, so hopefully they'll be ready for production samples soon. They're getting print items not requiring translation to Longpack bit by bit to keep on schedule. Oh, and if you happen to be attending BerlinCon, go check out their shiny new booth and say hello. We got a quick update from Warcrow to let us know that work is continuing at a good pace, and they hope to have results to share soon. Everything is on schedule for the proposed delivery date, and they're announcing the Warcrow War Game this week. This will incorporate many of the characters from the Warcrow adventures into a full tabletop skirmish experience. In a rare update from the Queen's Dilemma team, we're getting a timeline non-update and development check-in. A few of the deeper narrative lines needed to be majorly redone, and this has understandably caused some extra resources and time to be spent. While they think that this will only cause a slight delay, they're hesitant to estimate the actual impact on delivery. So to put it in plain English, they don't want to guess at when fulfillment will happen at this point. Maybe in the future. The graphics team have been working on UI UX and provided a few samples for the update. The Creatures of the Night have come out to play in the latest Dark Quarter update. This one shines the Blood Moon spotlight on the vampires you'll undoubtedly have to deal with during your investigations. Development has been looking into character progression mechanics to make each choice impactful and meaningful. You'll be spending experience tokens to improve raw skills and to unlock unique abilities. This will happen during interludes that will trigger a few times per scenario. Experience is shared across your team, so of course there'll be some give and take in how it's used. App framework updates and improvements continue for the Dark Quarter, stretching what Lucky Duck is already has in place, adding a ton of new functionality. This update looks into the structure and hierarchy of the vampires living in the Dark Quarter. All belong to the Covenant, except one, the Countess's sister. Of course, you'll also have Julia at your side in the Agency, and this update shows off her not-so-lovely side. 
Youthia Fierce Powers and Crawling Shadows gameplay content is complete and print files have been finalized for mass production. Proofs are being made and if all is well, production starts soon. This update we're getting a look at some of the new treasure tiles and some of these are going to be interesting. Corrupted essences that you can use to create whatever essence you want or a deal with a thieves guild that'll see them working for you to deliver some truly valuable prizes. How about a genie and a lamp? Treasure is certainly going to get a lot more exciting this go around. And last but certainly not least for the crowdfunding campaign news, Harakiri has pushed out another jam-packed update. The pledge manager has been extended for the final time. You have until the end of July to finish out your pledge or a late pledge. Don't let your pledge go stale here. If you paid your money, get your game! The progress chart is looking good with translations getting closer to finished and editing and layout becoming primary focuses. This update showcases some of the Shogun's chosen ones, the ever-vicious Demon Hunter and Surube Atashi. The art for these guys is spectacular and the AR card backs look fantastic. Want to see more of the amazing components and miniatures up close? Many YouTubers have been posting unboxings of sample boxes sent out by Synergic and I just posted mine last week. If you haven't checked it out already, you owe it to yourself. I was floored by the quality of the components and the wash on the miniatures is to die for. I'll link that video in the description for anyone interested. This update's painting section shows the stomach churning Akaname and the intense blood Oni. I especially love the bright palette used on this guy. So over in Warhammer and GW news, we got the not 40k preview this week, showing off a selection of upcoming additions to the less futuristic parts of their portfolio. We even got some old world news. But first, let's check in on the Battle of Ogrim. This is far from a one-sided battle, with tens of thousands of battle reports being filed. As it now sits, Space Marines sit at 51% victories, leaving Tyranid at 49%. This is incredibly close and can still swing in any direction. There have been times that a single battle was deciding the outcome. Personally, I'm pulling for the Xenos Overlords. Who needs more blue? Am I right? The not 40k preview this week showed off a ton of awesome content coming to some of the other corners of Warhammer and the GW universe. A new Cities of Sigmar starter pack is headed towards release, cram-packed with a ton of great minis full of character. For Horus Heresy, they revealed a massive new Knight Castigator in Knight Asheron. A new warband of monster killers was shown for Warcry, and we saw the Skabix Plague Pack for Warhammer Underworlds. The Battle Standard Bearer proudly represented for Warhammer the Old World, and we finally got a look at the launch pack for Warhammer Legion's Imperialis, which promises to take our battles to a whole new scale. Last, we got a peek at everything headed to pre-order this week, including the Dawnbringers Book 1 Harbringers and its limited edition, Warhammer Age of Sigmar's General's Handbook for 2023 and 2024, Fulgoth's Shutterhood, Jerrion's Delegation, Fjordji's Flamebearers, Braggot's Bottle Snatches, Blood Bowl Old World Alliance Team, Middenheim Maulers, and the Old World Alliance Team Card Pack and the Underworld Denizens Team, the Underworld Creepers, and the Underworld Denizens Team card pack. Finally, over at Target, you can pre-order the Warhammer 40k Space Marines board game. And that's going to be a wrap on the news for this week. I managed not to blow myself up this year during the holiday, so there's an upcoming campaigns video in the near future with an unboxing for Shadow of Brimstone following oh so close behind. I hope everyone in the US had a safe and relaxing holiday, and I hope everyone else got some time to themselves or a good game. I got a huge surprise in the mail today, and I can't wait to dive in and start sharing all the juicy details on it soon. Thank you to everyone watching, commenting, and supporting the channel. You all are the best. Have a great week, stay frosty, and we'll talk soon.